The Princeton Art Guild showcases exhibits on an eight-week rotation in our Charles Alvin Lisenby Gallery. Nikki Don Salyers opened our year in 2019. Nikki is a native of Princeton, Kentucky. His career spanned 28 years with the Tennessee Department of Corrections. Nikki is a self-taught artist and poet. He's had a love for drawing since in high school, and even though he had no formal art training, became serious with his drawing in 1985. Nikki will tell you he drew what he loved, which was the name of his first gallery show and the first time his work was in one location for the public to see. An artist reception was held Sunday, December 16th, 1 p.m. at the Guildhouse. Tammy Strike Console has been a crafter and artist her entire life. While growing up, she was lucky enough to always be around talented artists and acquired so much knowledge from them. She learned how to oil paint from her grandmother at the age of 10 and various other painting techniques from her aunt. This exhibit showcased Tammy's landscape and scene paintings as well as painted crafts made with her favorite media, reclaimed wood and acrylic paint. An artist reception to honor Tammy was held Sunday, March 10th at 1 p.m. at the Guildhouse. Tammy's solo show, Little Something Something, was in our Charles Alvin Lisenby Gallery during the months of February and March. The art and craftsmanship of woodworker Johnny Barnett was on exhibit at the Princeton Art Guild during the months of April and May. Johnny is a retired coal miner from Crofton, Kentucky. He's been working with wood for over 30 years. His passion is finding unusual pieces of wood and joining those to create one-of-a-kind items that are both functional and unique works of art. Using wood from sassafras, cedar, locust, spalted maple, box elder, cherry, walnut, peach, and bird's eye maple, Johnny's vision translates into pieces ranging from unique tables to cutting boards, mirrors, and wall hangings. Many of the one-of-a-kind pieces Johnny creates has his own unique story, from the buckshot in a cedar fence post leg to a cedar tree used as a base from a tornado. An artist reception to honor Johnny and his work was held on Friday, April 26th, 6 p.m. at the Guildhouse. Jason Jones Photography was our highlighted artist in June and July. The first photos he took and shared to photography sites were done with a cell phone camera. He realized he had a hobby he could do anytime. Over time, he bought a camera and started learning and exploring. The photos he shared were well received and he realized this hobby was fulfilling and his interest grew. He's been published in Unbridled Art Magazine, received many online awards, awards with the Penaroyal State Resort Park Advanced Landscape Photography, and awards in an exhibit with the Penaroyal Arts Council National Endowment of the Arts. He has displayed pieces in Murray, Cadiz, Hopkinsville, and Princeton, and sent pieces as far as England. His current favorite subjects are old barns, landscapes, and wildlife. An artist reception to honor Jason was held June 9th at 1 p.m. at the Guildhouse. Jody Ann Hale's show was a collection 20 years in the making. 20 years stashed away, packed from state to state and house to house. Oil, acrylic, watercolor, pen and ink, scratchboard, photography, and Jody Ann's favorite, charcoals. Here you will see works that were completed as classroom assignments, works attended as gifts for family, works done just for fun, and many done for commissions. Some pieces were left unfinished over time as time is not always easy to find. Other pieces thought to be unfinished are beautiful in their imperfections. A small portion of her collection was displayed for the public to view in her first ever solo show. 20 years in the making showed in our Charles Alvin Lisenby Gallery during August and September. An artist reception was held on September 1st, 2 p.m. at the Guildhouse. If you hang around with Mike Mullins very long, you'll surely hear him say, that's too good to throw away. He grew up in western Kentucky scavenging wood pieces and metal from his father's work truck to build portable bicycle ramps and kiss shoes for the neighborhood kids. Mike gathers a variety of metal from scrap yards, repair shops, and friends. He reuses the discarded items to build one-of-a-kind metal sculptures. 
Mike has also been a hobby photographer for 45 years. He enjoys finding interesting subjects and using a photographic technique called light painting and today's technology to create imagery that causes viewers to slow down and study them. Mike's solo show, cleverly named Revived, showed in our Charles Alvin Lisenby Gallery during the months of October and November. An artist reception was held on October 20th, 2 p.m. at the Guildhouse. The exhibit Portals, created by Jared Scott, a Dawson Springs, Kentucky-born artist, illustrator, muralist, and printmaker, was in our Charles Alvin Lisenby Gallery in December. Jared attempts to convey his idea of conservation through the use of his materials and visual storytelling. Some of his acrylic paintings and pencil illustrations focus on the current state of our planet, including endangered species and their futures without the help of humanity. His most recent sculpture works take form with damaged or discarded taxidermy. Jared attempts to bring honor and enlightenment to these animals through the use of crystals, beads, jewels, insects, gold leaf, silver leaf, and light. Through this exhibit, he hoped to raise awareness of the importance of life on this planet and inspire others to view the world as full of magic and worthy of our attention and care. An artist reception to honor Jared and his work was held on Saturday, December 14th, 1 p.m. at the Guildhouse. Spring workshops were held in February and March with our children's workshop instructor, Emily Freeman. Miss Emily has workshops throughout the year that consist of six workshop sessions in each series. The cost is $65 per child and all materials are provided. In 2019, Miss Emily instructed 41 session workshops inside the Guildhouse. If you would like more information about our children's workshops, you can call the Guildhouse at 270-365-3959 or email us at director at princetonartguild.org. I want to thank the following participating businesses for supporting art projects at the Guildhouse such as our Spring Kite Project in which 19 young artists ages 4 through 13 painted wooden kites that were displayed in 19 businesses in downtown Princeton this spring. Black Patch Grill, Emory Spradling, Caldwell County Sheriff's Office, Three Bows and a Bell, Newsom's Old Mill Store, Kentucky Farm Bureau, Brantley's Furniture, Massage Therapy, Service Plus, Joseph Storage Bin, Coleman's Shoe and Bootery, Joiner Hardware, The Law Office of Jill Giordano, Feather Your Nest, Galleria 107, Blooms by the Brook, Lusby's Heating and Air, Big Boy's Barbershop, and The Joshua Tree. Each young artist wrote thank you notes to the businesses and hand delivered them when they picked up their kite. The 2019 annual meeting of the Princeton Art Guild and Gallery was held on Monday, March 25th at 6 p.m. at the Guildhouse. The 2018 Bill Grandstaff Artist of the Year Award was presented to Nikki Don Salyers, and the 2018 Ralph M. Sharp Volunteer of the Year Award was presented to Diana Orange. Members watched a year in review video and enjoyed cake, punch, and fellowship. Our out 
outdoor sign received some much needed sanding and fresh paint by our director and new hardware put on by Guild member Bruce Perkins. The new outdoor vinyl lettering was applied by Guild member Lindsay Tuning of the Scrappy Giraffe. Our Charles Alvin Lizabe Gallery was updated with new track lighting thanks to an Angeline Henry Trust Grant and the work of Phelps Electric. The Holistic Homeschoolers of Kentucky had their third annual field trip to the Guild House in March. Students painted wooden kites with Miss Melissa for the Spring Kite Project and then enjoyed lunch in the park. Creative Kids workshops were held in April and May with Miss Emily. From live flower art, bunnies and chicks painted on wood, dipped mugs in fingernail polish, and freestyle art on canvas, here you will see special works of art created during this series with guidance from Miss Emily. All throughout the year, you will find local artwork for sale and show in the Guild House. Here you are certain to find one-of-a-kind gifts that are created locally. At this time, we have more than 20 artists selling their wares at the Guild House. If you would like to sell your handcrafted handmade arts in our gallery, contact us at 270-365-3959 or email us at director at princetonartguild.org for more information. We are open Tuesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. Our location is 115 East Main Street in downtown Princeton, Kentucky. You can find us on Facebook by searching Princeton Art Guild, Inc. Every Tuesday morning in June, Miss Melissa instructed an art camp with a dozen participants from the PACT program. PACT is Parents with Autistic Children Together. It's a local nonprofit organization and parent support group. Miss Melissa opened the Guild House for a summer camp program for the siblings of autistic children. The camp gave these siblings an outlet to enjoy some time with peers and create art together. We painted 3D puffer fish, flower art, painted wooden kites, and made felt monster bookmarks.
Miss Emily's Summer Series workshops were in June and July, with two workshops every Tuesday in the summer. Check out these photos from our Summer Series where young artists completed tile paintings, made tea light lanterns, formed art with glue, salt, and watercolors, created custom handprint or footprint artwork, and had a mess of fun with straw-blown art. Miss Emily's workshops are for children ages four and up, and classes are limited to 10 sign-ups. To learn more about children's workshops at the Guildhouse, call Miss Melissa, Guildhouse Director, at 270-365-3959 or email us at director at princetonartguild.org. Hey, Chloe, what is art to you? Well, that makes stuff pretty. It does make stuff pretty. Thank you. On June 26, a group of 10 young artists with the Community Disciples Summer Enrichment Program created an art project at the Guild House with director Miss Melissa. We created a puffer fish scene using poster board, bubble wrap, and Play-Doh. The Princeton Art Guild sponsored the Jazz on the Lawn, a free community event hosted by Adsmore House and Gardens on Sunday, September 22nd. There was plein air painting on the lawn and an 18-piece exhibit of Black Patch Heritage artwork by local artist Al Curry and owned by the Guild was set up outside for the public to view. Adsmore set up an exhibit of Catherine Garrett's time at Ward Belmont School on their side porch and the Todd Hill Trio provided music sponsored by the Princeton Art Guild. The trio consists of Todd Hill, Scott Thiele, and Dean Hughes. In August and September, the Guild House was full of imagination and excitement. Our young artists were back in the house creating works of art with tissue painting, a bird feeder workshop with ceramic pots, they made wind chimes and glow-in-the-dark jars, had a rock painting session, and ended the series with freestyle painting on canvas. Check out these photos from the Back to School workshops with Miss Emily.
Saturday, September 7th was a good day to have a good day in downtown Princeton, Kentucky. The Princeton Art Guild had our Art on Main event during the annual Black Patch Heritage Festival. Artists set up booths on the east end of Main Street in front of the Guild House selling their handcrafted and handmade arts from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. This year's Art on Main event will take place Saturday, September 12th. For more information about Art on Main or how to be an artist vendor, call the Guild House at 270-365-3959 or email us at director at princetonartguild.org. Miss Emily's fall workshops took place in October and November. Sessions included tree bark paintings, animal faces painted on canvas, painting ghosts, pumpkins, witches, cats, Frankenstein and Dracula on wood blocks. There was a Halloween feet workshop in the series and turkey gourds. And one of my favorites, the gobble gobble tea towels. Check out these fantastic creations in the fall series. From the Penarol Center to the Watercolor Artist Guild, to the entire fifth grade class at Caldwell County Schools, we're here to tell you we love your group visits at the Princeton Art Guild. We were so glad to be a part of the Caldwell County fifth grade downtown tour, which brought in over 150 visitors to the Guild House on October 18th. Our in-house artist, Mike Mullins, spent the entire day greeting students and teachers, answering questions about his scrap metal art exhibit in our Charles Alvin Lisenby Gallery. Every group toured the Guild and spent time with Mr. Mullins asking questions and guessing what items he used to create his art, and every group got a chance for a photo op with the artist. We encourage groups, organizations, and schools to include the Princeton Art Guild in your activities. If you have a tour schedule we need to work with, just give us a call at 270-365-3959. On Saturday, October 5th, the Princeton Art Guild held our annual Artisan Festival hosted by Adams Breezy Hill Farm and Restaurant located at 1222 Cadiz Road in Princeton, Kentucky. The Princeton Art Guild held a raffle to raise money at this annual fundraising event for the Guild House. Adams Breezy Hill sponsored free hay rides throughout the day and vendors set up on the grounds with handmade jewelry, wreaths, table arrangements, sewn crafts, homemade soaps, paintings, metal, stone, and woodworking, crochet, embroidery, barn quilts, wood swings, cookbooks, homemade ice cream, and so much more.
The Singer-Songwriter Showcase, sponsored by Planters Bank in Princeton, began at 1 p.m. with Princeton's own Lacey Goodbread. Lacey is a college student who's been writing songs the last 10 years. Every song has a special story, and her main goal is to write music that makes people feel something. Lives and what we wanted to be. We were play games, we were stay the same, and we'll pray we won't ever change. We won't let this world bring us down no more. So oh, oh. Fate McAfee and Melanie Davis of Murray, Kentucky, have independently cut their teeth throughout the American Mid-South for a combined seven years. The two artists began collaborating in writing and performance in the spring of 2018, taking cues from two-piece greats like Gillian Welch and David Rollins and Joan Baez and Bob Dylan Fate and Melanie's music is both familiar and unique, melancholic and hopeful, offering a different perspective of the Mid-South experience so often associated with Americana and folk. Award-winning Australian duo Leaving Lennox were our headliners for the Songwriters Showcase. Leaving Lennox are undeniably saturated with on-stage chemistry that is unreplicable. Combine pop folk with haunting harmonies and soulful guitar work and you've got the award-winning Australian duo comprised of singer-songwriters Mick Hambly and Lauren Val. The pair made the big move to Music City taking on Nashville with their fresh and unique sound. Their songwriting tells a story that audiences can relate to. You can find Leaving Linux on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and their website, leavinglinux.com. Can't remember how I saw you down in a bar, maybe school or a street. I stumbled down. We met eyes, and it went on from there. I told myself what I thought of you and how much I would care to spend my time, all of it with you. The last workshop sessions for the year with Miss Emily were the holiday workshops. From beautifully painted glass ornaments to Christmas spoons, painted fork trees on canvas, gingerbread flower pots, wooden ornaments that will certainly be forever cherished, to wood block snowmen, these young artists have filled our guild house with laughter and excitement throughout the entire year. Over 200 of our community's youth visited the Guild House in 2019, and over 60 different children painted and created artwork during workshop sessions at the Guild House with Miss Emily and Miss Melissa. We look forward to keeping our youth involved in Guild activities in 2020. Good morning, everybody. Can you tell me where you're at? The Art Guild. Okay, I'm going to ask, hey, Jerwin, what does art mean to you? I, when I dream, I imagine whatever I dream, I wish to draw. 
whatever you dream you wish to draw. And you do that sometimes, and that's what art is to you. It's what you imagined. Thank you for that. Anybody else? Grace. Tell me. Grayson, what I is art? I think art makes uh, um, people happy. It does make people happy. That's right. And what ways do you think it does? With the paints. With the paints. All the pretty colors. The Princeton Art Guild is a 501c3 nonprofit funded through memberships, grants, and private donations. Annual membership is $15 for a student, $20 for an individual, and $30 for a family. Although membership is not required to enjoy events, exhibits, and workshops, memberships are vital and an easy way to help us offer arts and cultural activities to our community and our children.